What is going on everybody? Welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to the vlog. It is another beautiful almost weekend here in New York City. So I just finished a case with my vascular surgery colleagues and I am currently headed home right now because we have a beautiful weekend together with the wife before I start another seven days of call. I feel like it never ends. But anyways, that is not the topic of today's video because I wanted to talk about all these questions I keep getting asked and these questions are pretty common and I hate these questions. So I wanted to do an entire video devoted on all the questions I hate getting asked and why I hate getting asked these questions. Well, I literally just missed the bus. Well, I didn't miss the bus. The bus actually didn't stop for me. So let me go get on another stop and we'll get to the questions. The absolute number one question I get asked that I hate the absolute most is when people say, hey Dr. Cellini, big fan of your channel. Can you give me advice? Like, what does that actually mean when you are asking me for advice? Now, don't get me wrong. I am all about giving advice to people and helping them out in any of their careers, especially in medicine, because that is what I know the most. When you just send me a blanket statement asking me for advice, that could be literally anything, like as in the most general question on earth. I don't know if you're asking me for advice on what you want for dinner. I don't know if you're asking me for advice on how to take the MCAT. I don't know any of that. So if you want to ask me for advice, just tell me what kind of advice you're actually seeking. Otherwise, I'm just not gonna respond because if I were to just give someone advice, that would take me like years and years and years and I don't have that kind of time, unfortunately. Question number two, what's the lowest USMLE step one score I can get in order to match into interventional radiology? Or what's the lowest MCAT score I can get to match into medical school? I have so many problems with that question. I don't even know where to begin. For starters, the goal of any test is obviously to do the best you possibly can. Why would you limit yourself going into a test? I, that just doesn't make sense to me. Why you would be like, okay, I want to get an X score so that I can get into X residency or X score so I can get into X medical school. Why would you not want to blow the test out of the water to do the absolute best you possibly can and to give yourself options. Like that just, it just doesn't register in my brain why you would want to do less to get something rather than reach like above and beyond. Like you never go into a test to be like, I only want to make an 80 on this test. No, you study like you want to make a hundred on the test in hopes that you make a hundred on the test and do really well. I guess that concept just like doesn't make sense to me. You never want to limit yourself going into one of these examinations because if you limit yourself right off the bat, you're already setting yourself up for failure. For instance, if you only need to score like a 245 on step one to max into radiology, why would you try to study to get a 245? You should study like you're trying to get a 280 or something so that at least it gives you some options when you're trying to match into residency. I scored pretty well on step one and I can promise you I did not go into that test thinking I was going to make like a 220 or a 200 because I don't want to make the bare minimum. I just, I don't understand. I know a lot of people are agreeing with me and nodding their heads right now, but I cannot tell you how many of these questions I get. Now this next question is along the same lines as the previous one. 
and that is, do I need research to match into IR or radiology? I get asked this question so much, and again, it goes back to my prior statements. If you want to match into a very competitive specialty like radiology or interventional radiology, wouldn't you just do research just to be sure, most people matching into radiology or interventional radiology have some sort of research experience because it helps set them apart from their other applicants. So if you are trying to match into a competitive specialty, you should do whatever it takes and try to put yourself ahead of all of your competition in order to feel comfortable that you're going to match. So basically what I'm trying to say is don't ask me questions about how little of effort you can put forward in order for something to happen. So don't ask me how little effort you can put forward in order to match because I either won't answer or I'm just gonna tell you that you need to put in 100% because you should probably already know that. And before I move on to the next question, I just want you guys to know that no, I'm not this mean and yes, I answer a bajillion questions every single day about, I mean, you name it, I answer questions about. So I do answer plenty of questions. I get a ton of messages in my inbox all day long, emails and DMs on Instagram. So I try to answer whatever, but if you want me to answer them, be specific and I will answer them. It takes a lot of time for me to answer all these questions. So I try to do my best. So if you wanna ask me something, ask me. The next question I get all the time that I hate answering, well, I don't answer it, but that is, what is the salary of a radiologist? Now, this is something you can Google. So why would you feel the need to ask me what my salary is? I don't understand that. I never go and ask anybody what their salary is. I never walk up to any of my friends and say, hey, how much do you make every year? That's just not something you talk about with people. That's a very private thing and you should keep that to yourself and not talk about it with a whole bunch of people, which is why I don't talk about it with anybody either. I think what I'm gonna start doing is anybody who asks me what my salary is, I'm just going to ask them what their salary is. If they respond, maybe I'll think about responding. Maybe I won't, I don't know. The next question I don't like getting asked is, what classes will prepare me for a radiology residency? So I think I should first start off by saying there is nothing that really can prepare you for a radiology residency. The only thing that can prepare you for any residency is medical school. It doesn't matter what class you take in high school. It doesn't matter what class you take in college. There is no class that can prepare you for your residency. Residency is like the ultimate multi-year package training program for your specialty. And nothing can prepare you for that residency <laughs> except for being in that residency. No biology class, no physics class, or organic chemistry class is going to prepare you for radiology. Now I could see that there may be some like medical physics tie-in into radiology if you were interested in taking a class like that, but chances are if you took a medical physics class in undergrad or college university, you won't remember it four or five, six years ago prior to radiology residency. You probably won't remember anything from those classes. I personally know studying for physics this year, I don't remember anything that I did or studied during my physics classes before medical school. Now, if you are interested in radiology and want to learn a bit in med school or whatnot, I'll put a link up here and it's some books or some of my favorite books and resources that help you learn along the way. But ultimately, the only way to learn radiology is do a radiology residency. All right, so the last and final question I do not like getting asked is basically a general concept, and that is do not ask me anything you can Google yourself. I get asked so many questions that can be solved with just a simple Google search, i.e., what is a radiology salary? How long is a radiology residency? What's the difference between a radiologist and an interventional radiologist? What's the difference between a radiology tech and a radiologist? These are all answers that you can find on Google because we have a world of information at our fingertips. And honestly, it would take me far longer to answer any of those questions than you could get the answer from a simple Google search. So if you have a question, Google it first, and if you still don't understand it, maybe reach out to me and ask me a question and I'll try to answer it. So before I end this video, I do just wanna reiterate, I'm not angry that I get these questions, but these are just the most common questions that I just don't like getting asked. Ask me some specific questions, ask me some good questions that you've already searched for and can't find the answer for. I always answer them. I'm happy to answer and help you all out. Make sure you smash that like, subscribe button, follow me on Instagram if you don't already. Otherwise, I'll see you all twice a week, every single week, on the next video.